1 verse 23. Your assignment is a critical ingredient in understanding your identity. He said, if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I am made a minister. He gave us a brief interlude into the circumstances, the situations, the orchestrations that were in place that occasioned this calling. A man that has this back and understanding of his calling cannot forfeit the pathway of his calling to try something because it is raining. Because his identity is forged into this assignment. It is because of this that I'm a preacher. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. You see, because he knows his assignment, he's also at home with the affliction, with the sacrifices that he will have to pay in order for him to dispatch that assignment. When you find someone that doesn't understand his assignment, he cannot understand his warfare. He cannot understand the, his sacrifice. He, he will think he's suffering. He doesn't know that that sacrifice is the allocation that he has received. Because the body of Christ, the way Jesus authored our salvation is through suffering. suffering. Is that true? And the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. So in prosecuting your destiny, there is an allocation of suffering that is part of your destiny. Because the body of Christ was born by suffering. It's a body of suffering. In order for the body of Christ to be perfected, each member, the body will have to suffer. Because that is the pattern by which the author authored our salvation. So when you hear a preacher say you will not suffer again forever, that's, that's, that's a gimmick. That's not apostolic. It's deceptive. It will give you an expectation that is false, that is not consistent with our heritage. And it doesn't matter how old the preacher is. In my own opinion, if you don't have what to say, sit down. And so when people hear such things, you will not suffer again forever. And it doesn't go further to clarify the fact that we are a body of suffering. And that a disciple cannot be greater than his master. It's the same process that Jesus pioneered that is going to be the texture of your experience as you journey to work with God. Try to be a righteous man in the midst of a corrupt system. Then you will discover that just for being righteous, you will become a prey. But the guy's heart is not prepared for that kind of engagement because his pastor told him he will not suffer again forever. And they said amen on the camp. But this man understands the suffering that is associated with his unique calling. He has embraced it. Why? Because he knows his assignment. When you begin to understand your assignment, begin to ask God to also reveal to you the things you will suffer. Because suffer you shall. Hallelujah. You know when people see ministry, they, they look at the suit that is wearing. They say, man, this is is David Wedge. Okay. Welcome on board. By the time, the first thing that will help you in the lecture is hunger. Hunger will teach you practical lessons. Practical lessons. Practical lessons. Then we, those lessons are, are necessary for mind renewal. The bogus, destructive psychology you have developed from attending to false doctrine. Hunger and affliction will purge you of it. And then it will now bring you into the right frame of mind. That, okay, this is actually part of the calling. If you know that it's part of the calling, you'll be ready to face it. And I tell you, even in Somalia, eh, the places where people die of hunger, none of the people that died was a preacher. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because God will always supply. If you are, don't be afraid of suffering. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid of. It's part of the process. There are some sufferings I went through that was the reason for which I was able to forego pride. 
it produced in me a peaceable walk of righteousness. Do you understand that? There are some sufferings I went through, which, which now, the outcome of that suffering was that it made me prudent in handling resources. I don't waste resources. Do you understand that? There are some processes we go through, like um, somewhere along the line in ministry, when the power gifts began to operate in my life, there were pastors in this city that said, I was using my wedding ring as a magic wand. In fact, one lecturer in Benin State University said, the, the same Ezemo he consults is the one I consult. Is, so we are, we are related in consultation. <laughs> Even though I stopped wearing my ring till today, it didn't help. And it went on for seven years. And the people that used their pulpits to preach me, after seven years, I don't know what happened. One of them just came up and when we wrote this kingdom calibration and presented the book to the congregation and said, I will suggest that you buy this book. He just changed. After seven years. Alright? Some say that I had an altar in my office. Now the evangelist Chris used to go and touch the altar. And that's why when he comes back, he, he begins to shout. His own tongues are wild. He says, is that altar? Is that altar? So many people were coming to the ministry to see the occultic pastor. Alright? And there was nothing we could do about that. And Jesus didn't kill the people that were pushing the message. It means he allowed it. There are times where pressure will come. Jesus will, he will sign that allow. And if you don't have the right frame of mind that connected to your assignment are, are catch, catches of afflictions, catches of pressures, catches of, of all kinds of stuff, you will not be in the right mind to prosecute destiny. Hallelujah. Number two. Two ingredients in the understanding of identity is the nature of the anointing that is at work in your life. The nature of the anointing. What kind of anointing?